Elon Musk has repeatedly expressed his strong interest in human colonization of Mars. But how does he aim to achieve this? Welcome to First Class Tech, and in this video, we'll take a look at how Elon Musk will go to Mars and colonize it. Curious to know? Let's find out. As obvious as it may seem, transportation is the lifeblood of any project to turn Mars into our second home. It literally makes or breaks the possibility of Mars colonization. Musk intends to drastically reduce the cost of rocket launch to $10 per kilogram of weight, which is critical to making the trip to Mars a reality. So what exactly does it take for us to achieve that level of cost efficiency? Reusable rockets are the solution. Unlike NASA's old inefficient single-use rockets, SpaceX emphasizes reusability. Not only will this be more environmentally friendly, because we won't be throwing space debris around, but it will also allow SpaceX rockets to become more cost and time efficient. Elon Musk intends to launch at least three reusable Starship space shuttles per day, each carrying at least 100 tons of payload. This establishes a yearly estimate of transporting 100 tons of cargo with the assistance of 1,000 Starships. Elon Musk has also stated that 1,000 Starships will be able to transport 100,000 people every 20 26 months. The length of the Earth-Mars orbit sink in 26 months, which indicates how long it takes for the Earth and Martian orbits to align optimally for transportation. But why does a Starship fleet need to transport at least 100,000 people every 26 months? These numbers appear to be far too specific to be a coincidence. According to Musk, in order for the Mars colony to be self-sustaining, there must be at least 1 million people present. The population of 1 million exists as the population where people can build, manufacture, and produce anything to survive without relying on Earth supplies. Currently, SpaceX is working on the BFR, also known as the Big Falcon Rocket, a 25-story monster capable of carrying loads of up to 1,000 tons. SpaceX created and manufactured the Raptor engine to power the BFR, while a single Raptor is already capable of lifting 172 cars, which is equivalent to an entire Boeing 747, one can only imagine how much thrust the BFR, which houses 42 powerful Raptors, will provide. The BFR is expected to house not only the crew and life support systems, but also theaters, restaurants, lecture halls, and zero-gravity game centers. The payload is one thing, but without fuel or energy, the BFR will not move. Elon Musk and SpaceX have expressed their support for using the frozen polar ice caps on Mars to refuel the starships, allowing them to travel to Mars without carrying the fuel needed for the return trip to Earth. This would be accomplished by converting water and carbon dioxide in the polar ice caps into liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which would serve as fuel for the starship's engines. Although promising, it should be noted that the aforementioned are only rough sketches of the future for the time being. At the moment, SpaceX is solely focused on developing safe and cost-effective effective interplanetary transportation. Projects to build human habitants on Mars have been prioritized low. However, SpaceX has confirmed that they are unquestionably on the right track towards that unavoidable possibility. Overall, humans will not be the only passengers on the starships. Cargo is also an essential component of ending mission, from the bare necessities to movie theaters, and don't forget, vitamin C, all of which are thought to require additional space and money for transportation. Musk used vitamin C as a stark example of something that, while not as important as necessities like food, water, oxygen, and shelter, is still necessary. Vitamin C, a scarce resource, is required if the inhabitants of Mars do not want to die a sailor's death. Elon Musk has repeatedly stated that one of the keys to unlocking Mars colonization is the colony's ability to achieve self-sustainability. The reason for this obsession is that if supply ships are unable to reach Mars due to unforeseen circumstances, the colony must be able to provide sufficient sustenance for its citizens. How long it will take a colony to achieve full self-sufficiency is still up in the air. As a result, it is critical to plan out what resources are required before embarking on any expedition. Musk estimates that it will take a thousand starships to transport approximately 1 million tons of vitamin C to ensure that no one dies slowly and painfully. SpaceX has planned two uncrewed missions for the first few runs to send cargo, such as life support systems and power generators, which are required for human habitation. 
Following the initial missions, SpaceX intends to send two more cargo ships to establish a propellant production plant, but this time with a crew. This propellant manufacturing plant will eventually be used to convert water and carbon dioxide into rocket fuel, maximizing cargo space by reducing the amount of fuel each starship must carry for their return journey. By the way, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Getting back to the topic. Mars as we know it has harsh and uninhabitable terrain. There isn't much oxygen or water and did I mention the insane dust storms? Mars may be uninhabitable for the time being, but scientists, including Elon Musk, believe that terraforming could provide humanity with a second home in space. Many minds later, it was determined that terraforming Mars was simply not possible with current technology. However, despite this, SpaceX has continued to experiment with new terraforming concepts for Mars. One possible solution, for example, that has gained traction even beyond niche groups is the installation of glass domes on Mars' surface. Glass domes are self-sustaining domes that have their own sources of water, oxygen, and food. These domes were also supposed to function as neighborhoods with leisure and work centers. According to Musk, the domes would have an outdoorsy fun atmosphere, with the added benefit of not requiring spacesuits. Food would also be grown in this habitat, on solar-powered hydroponic farms located underground or within enclosed spaces. However, as with most things related to Mars, experts believe that it is unlikely to be possible with current technology. Finally, Elon Musk has admitted that we will never be able to witness the terraforming of Mars in a lifetime. Musk, on the other hand, has assured the public that human colonies on Mars can and will be established within this generation, which is also his current and ultimate goal. The concept of colonizing Mars, like all things, is subject to ethical scrutiny. Given the establishment of space law and the agreement governing the activities of states on the moon and other celestial bodies, SpaceX Mars has also deemed Mars a free planet with its own rules and legislation distinct from Earth. Elon Musk has openly stated that no Earth-based government will assert its authority and sovereignty over Martian activities. He has, however, stated that the government of Mars would be a direct democracy, with less complex laws than on Earth. Aside from the lack of technology and volunteer participants, there will always be one question in the back of our minds. Is Mars colonization profitable? No matter how self-sustaining the Martian colonies are, as long as they require more money than they generate, the entire concept is doomed. Arguments have been made that Mars is not only distant, hostile and difficult to access, but it also has no obvious valuable export, making it highly unprofitable. Elon Musk has also confirmed that trading mined minerals to Earth is insufficiently profitable to justify the transportation cost. Musk, on the other hand, has made efforts to promote intellectual property as Mars' primary export. Even so, without total cost estimates for the colonization process, we and any investors could only hope for the best, a profitable and sustainable Martian colony. Unless a Martian colony can generate its own value, governments and enthusiasts Yes, we'll have to pay for this advancement in human civilization out of pocket. What is the point of going to Mars? Why can't we stay on Earth and make the most of our lives? Why must we pursue a difficult, dreary, and to be honest, expensive path? The growing interest of rich Earthen populations in interstellar tourism, particularly with SpaceX's advances in Starship cost efficiency, makes the establishment of a Mars colony much more appealing. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. When do you think will humans colonize Mars? Let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the